Oh, where'd it go? Ooh! Dude, you Dude, I'm gonna slide beside you. Got one. It's a little green sunfish. Well, guys, that is the first fish of the day. I cast it in there and a whole bunch of little fish came over. We've been saying green sunfish all day, so that's just kind of why I hollered that out. Yeah, that's a green sunfish. All right, well, green sunfish number one on the little Ned rig. We'll just like pop it. If you can see it, just move it really slow and just, but like move it back towards you slowly. Okay. I'm gonna go back down here. You'll see that bag. What is down here? You'll see them right here. It's a big one. There's a little frog right there. No, it's not. I'll see. Yeah. It's a bluegill. Catch it. There's two of them. There's three of them. Oh, those are catfish or something. That's a catfish. Yeah. There's a snake. It's on the other bank. Oh, let it go. Ooh. Dude, did you hear that? No, it was a small one, but he ate it off the top of the water. Uh-uh. I was looking at that little black fish or whatever it was. There it is. You see it? That's a catfish, bro. Yeah. He smelled it. He definitely smelled it. That's a flathead. I know he smelled it. No, that's a... I bet that might be what I hooked. There's a big one in here. Got it. Is it a catfish? Yep. For real? Yeah. What? <laughs> I gotta get that. Greg, would you care to explain to the people what you have just done? Okay, so I just told Larry that I thought it was a bass at first from back there, and I just told him that catfish eat Berkeley baits. Mm -hmm. I have noticed one and catch bigger catfish on Berkeley baits. And I said he smells it. I kept seeing him swim around. I threw that little crawfish in there. Bam. This is not actually a fat head. I, well, I want to say this is a bull head. I'm not, I'm not no expert, but I want to say this is a bull head. I don't think this is a flat head. Because the flat heads, I want to say they're a little bit more different in color. But we can look it up. All right, so this is thing that can happen to you. It's called a juice overload. A juice overload is when you get too much juicy information at one time, and I'm gonna try not to overload your juices here. So check this out. I came back out to a pond that I fished a couple of videos ago because I lost a really big fish in the back corner of this pond. We are back, but we have some little max scent, little generals. So I fished these at the pond. I really didn't talk too much about them. I wanted to kind of save it so I can make this video. Are they juice? Yes. Would I lie to you about it? No. As you know, a net rig is already a pretty good way to catch fish. A net rig is basically like a small presentation of like a full size lure this is basically like a small little stick bait then you add the max scent like scent on top of that fish is within the area no matter what the size it's gonna eat this like 150 percent you're gonna catch bluegill on this pan fish and bass really anything in a pond you saw greg caught a catfish on the little cross so this is what i'm gonna be fishing today just because i know the fish wanted it in here and i lost a kind of big one and i really want to see if i can go catch them again so guys i just wanted to show you all this before the video started and guys i've never seen a color like this either it's like a watermelon up top with like a cloudy blue on the bottom it's really cool never fish like a stick bait this color so it's just a little thick stick bait great lure and i've been catching a lot of fish on it. hopefully we can do it again today we can replicate that the ned rig baits as far as i know there's just generals and crawls right now but i'm sure there'll be some more stuff out later i was sitting here thinking how can i explain this to you guys like how can i make what can i tell you all about this ned rig to make y'all want to fish it so i figured it out all right, so say you're just not getting into bass fishing. First, you throw it on a spinning rod and reel. So if you're a little hesitant to pick up a bait caster, which I don't recommend you being, because you're gonna backlash either way, just go ahead and get that. Clear that air up, clear that water up. You're gonna backlash the bait caster. You might as well go ahead and get it and start backlashing it because the more you backlash it, the less you'll backlash it, if that makes sense. First, you get to throw it on a spinning rod. Mostly everybody knows how to throw a spinning rod. There's a much smaller learning curve on throwing a spinning rod. Second, all you have to learn is how to tie a hook to your line. The rigging process is kind of difficult just check it out see how hard that was that was, that was a little that was a little tough joking guys the good thing about a ned rig is like there's literally no there's no like texas rig you know the first time you rig a texas rig and you can never get that plastic back on there right the ned rig you just literally slide it down after about an inch of your bait comes like down onto the hook you just pop the hook point out and then slide it back up all you do is you cast it out not into a tree preferably 
and you just pop it. Reel your slack out of your line, get your line kind of tight to where you can feel the nittery, and you just pop it. And you just do that over and over, and I promise you're gonna get a bite. There's zero difficulty to throwing a Ned Rig. If you're just out and you just want to beat the crap out of one of your friends fishing one day, he's just been talking all this crap about his new combo and all that. Tie on a Ned Rig and just, just whoop him. I promise you, you can do it. And the good thing about it is a Ned Rig is one of those baits. If you fish in an area, oh, look, there's one already. Oh, that's a stick. Never mind. <laughs> That'll happen too sometimes. You know, that happens to all of us. That stick was running, I promise. The good thing about it is if you're fishing in an area that's kind of overfished, a nade rig is one of those lures that most fish will eat anyway. Like even if they've seen, fish have seen chatterbaits, crankbaits, uh, topwater, sinkos, but a lot of times fish haven't seen nade rigs because people don't want to slow down and fish them. That was my problem with them. I was like, I'm not fishing that slow lure. I don't have five, 10 minutes to retrieve a lure off of one cast. But then you start seeing how like, how much your fish catch ratio goes up, your cast to catch ratio. And then you're like, huh, I should probably try that out. And then you just add the maxing on top of it and it's just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Oh, I have one. <laughs> He was stuck around a log, I guess. Hey, that's fish number one. That's a pretty one. It's a little thin one. It's bigger than the ones that we caught out of here the first time. I'm not mad at that. Cannot be mad at fish number one at all. He ate it. Look how he ate it. He choked it. He wanted it, I think, maybe. He was passionate about it. We'll say that. Yes, yeah, that's fish number one on the little Ned rig. I think he had me like wrapped around a tree or he was close to a tree because I felt him and I waited to set the hook. And then when I set it, it was like he hit a tree. Oh, there's one. Already, he was sitting back there. Oh, he got off, dang it. That was like the perfect cast back in there and I guess he ate it the second it came down. So you guys, that's the thing. Sometimes you just have to make the cast. So like, that's not a very comfortable cast for me, but you just never know. Look, I think there might be, there's another one on there. That's a better one. Look, they're, they're stacked up back there. Let's, let's, get them, let's get him off and see if we can't catch another one. See, sometimes you don't always make the comfortable cast. Sometimes it's like the cast, like, man, I don't want to make that, but there might be a fish back there. So we make it, fish number two. All right, maybe we can get lucky and catch another one back there. All right, we'll have to come back and try that spot. I think I might be a little bit too close to it now. I'm like turned around backwards. Oh, there's another one. No way. Dude, there's another one. There was three back there. That's the third fish. He just flopped my Ned rig off. I can't make this stuff up, guys. This is some like stuff that you really just can't lie about. Guys, that's three fish out of that one little pocket right there. So that's why I say when you're on this kayak or like on any really boat or anything, just try to be as quiet as possible. Don't be rocking in the water. There's a good chance I could cast back in there again and catch another one. Or I just keep catching the same one over and over. All right, we're gonna leave this spot right here alone and then we're gonna come back to it. Ooh, there was one that just came up and tried to eat that. Did you see that? Did you see that? You had to see that. The camera was pointed right at it. I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear you didn't see it. I know you had to. You had to. Want to follow it up and try to eat it. It missed it terribly. Oh, there's one. That's a good one. That's a, that's a stick. That's a stick. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's like the best thing about fishing is when you think you have a fish and it's actually just a stick. But I swear those sticks pull. Like 150% of those sticks pull drag sometimes. Like I'm sure somebody's probably been like spooled by a stick before. Oh, there's one. Oh, <laughs> that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. I never know where to like put my rod whenever I catch one. I'm like looking around for holes that aren't there. This one was cool because I like skipped it by this one and then it hit off that other log. I'm not sure if you can see that. It hit off that one and then like went over there. All right, guys, that is what fish number four. See you later. Right, let's see if we can't. Maybe catch another one off this spot. Guys, yeah, for like the amount of small fish that I've caught in here, I just know there's like one, four or five in here that just bullies all the other ones. It has to be, it's only right as it was. There has to be one that's just like a. Like... Oh, 
Oh man, that's a good one. See, that's a better one. That's a better one. I was saying, I think there's a good one in here. And of course he doesn't look big on camera, but like compared to the ones that we've been catching, this is not a monster, but he's definitely the biggest one out of here so far. Hooks at top of the mouth. He's not a super big fish, but it's the biggest one out of here. They're just so slim in here. I'm guessing there's probably not too many little bait fish in here for him to eat, but my line was like over there and then I start reeling it in and I'm like, my line is like moving very fast. So when your line moves fast, normally there's a fish in or it could be a stick, you know? That was kind of cool. All right, so that was what, fish number five, four, five? And see, that's another like cool technique you can do with the net rig. You can just let it sit and sometimes they'll just pick up. I mean, it's kind of like the same thing as like a Texas rig or whatever. Anytime you pull out your phone, sometimes when you pull out your phone when you're fishing the Texas rig, you could have not gotten bit all day. The second you pull out that phone and stop paying attention, your line just starts going crazy. Same thing with this, you know, sometimes the best action is no action. Now I'm public with the soundscapes. 